Hello? 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 Okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to the VJobs show. Uh, I hope I can take the 20 minutes to sh explain what we're doing here, and I hope that makes sense to you, right? So uh, VJobs, we are basically, uh, what you see is what you get, the experience for your uh, cloud ap applications. And uh, that's a screenshot actually from uh, our SaaS applications. Um, first of all, a uh, little about uh, ourselves. First of all, my name is Peng, Peng Zhao. Uh, I'm actually uh, the CEO and the co-founder of VJobs. Uh, my personal background is in the grid computing, uh, especially the computational grid, the scheduling stuff like Globus, if you know that, back 10 years ago. And I actually tried to build an uh, S uh, offering back to 2003 using Zen and the grid stuff like uh, the, the cluster computing. Uh, VisualOps itself is a uh, visual cloud management services, like a uh, SaaS uh, services for, for you to build your application in the cloud. Uh, currently, we support OpenStack, and we previously was support uh, AWS, uh, these two as well. The company is uh, founded in uh, 2012 and early 2003, and we are mostly uh, rooted in Beijing and have a branch in San Francisco. Uh, we raised a round actually last year from Square uh, in 2003. Okay. So um, this is a horizon. Uh, people are actually using it. It's standard uh, web UI console you got in OpenStack. I'm not trying to say there's something wrong with it. Actually, I'm saying like it works, it's clean, it's neat. But uh, think about it, it's the only way to doing the UI console for your deployment. Uh, we think that there's a better way to do it. Not only better way, but another way. So that's our, uh, that's our offering. It's actually a web-based console for you to drag and drop your applications, to build your infrastructure and applications. So this is how it looks. On the left side, it's actually the resource, uh, we call it resource panel. You can drag and drop the instance, the uh, different volumes, uh, load balancers. And on the right side, you can configure each uh, resource's properties. The cameras allow you to, it's basically uh, the similar experience you got in the Microsoft Visual. Uh, so uh, and after you design this, you can actually deploy the application into the cloud, uh, AWS or OpenStack. Uh, after, uh, so from at this stage, it's quite similar to what happens you got in Juju or CloudFormation or Heat. But we don't use those things. We use our proprietary uh, stuff. Uh, primary reason is that we, uh, we try to be multi-cloud. We try to be uh, independent of different clouds, so we use our own. Uh, or uh, uh, format. And the other thing is like we support more than more syntax, like a configuration management syntax than these two. So, so there's, we need to use our own stuff. And underneath, we're actually using source stack for the, to do the configuration management. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, the, our idea is actually bring the, what you see, what you get experience back to the, to the cloud. It's actually uh, have the three major uh, feature set to, for you. The first one is like you can drag and drop to build and design and deploy your application in the cloud. The second one is uh, you can actually visualize your entire infrastructures into VJobs. Like you can import your, your, your existing footprint to VJobs and generate the diagram automatically for you. And also we do the continuous detection of the, of the, of the de configuration drift. So if there's uh, something wrong with your infrastructure so we can detect it automatically and send an email to, to and notify you. Uh, the third one is we do the automatic uh, drift fix to ensure the application always running in the desired state. What I mean is like, supposing you have a, um, you have a LAMP stack running in the cloud, and then suddenly the database is crashed. The whole instance go, uh, going crashed, and then we can replace the database instance and recover the, the re redeploy the, the MySQL in the instance and then reload the data and restart uh, the the, the database in that new instance, and then reconfigure the, the web servers to point to new database server. So everything is happening automatically, and no in human intervention needed. So that's a three major uh, feature set we are going to do. And actually, this diagram shows you the whole complete idea of what, what you see and what you get. Two major parts is visu visualize what you have and ensure the application always running as I designed. Um, the first one is like visualize what I have, especially useful if you want to collaborate with, you, with your uh, colleagues. Say, my boss asked me for how my infrastructure looks like. I cannot throw him a, a bunch of recipes, so here it is. You check it out. I need to give him a, di a visual diagram of the infrastructure. And the problem with that diagram is like how do you keep that synchronized with your real pro production? And that's where we can help. We, we keep reloading the diagram if there's some changes. Uh, next, uh, I'll invite my uh, co-founder and CTO Xu to do some real demo of VisualOps to you guys. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, now I will show you how the Visual Ops works and how it works for OpenStack. Um, uh, we define a, define a, a name as a stack. Stack means a template. It can be uh, deployed to, to the to cloud to repeat your design. And the, 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 uh, when, the, when the servers and when the design is run in the cloud, it's named as uh, an app. First, we can, we can create a stack. I'll create a stack. We can, we can use all of the uh, support, supported open stack, open stack resources, uh, such as a router. Uh, for router, you can, you can edit all the, the, uh, the properties. In our design, we, we'd like to expose all the properties the providers can provide you uh, to you. And you can, you can have the whole power of open stack. And here's the subnet and the network. You can also you can you can also add other other resources to the uh, to the to the canvas. Uh, your own uh, the system provided image and your own image. And and configure all the. Uh, all the properties such as flavors and um, key pair and so on. And also you can uh, you can put um, low balancers here, uh, addition, additional some night to connect connect some nights with Connect some nice with routers, and connect the balancer, load balancers. And if if we do something wrong, uh, here is a here is another subnet. It is not connected with the uh, with the router and with other subnet. If you do something wrong, you can. You connect the the pool with the with the with the host. It can be uh, here here is validated. Will show there is an error. You cannot do it. And <coughs> after you after you you drag drag the resources, you can also configure the configure the, the software on it. We support we support Docker. We can you can you can just just. Uh, just indicate which do Docker image you want and how to run it. Uh, then it can be run in the uh, in the server. And also, we can use some some simple uh, some some simple simple state. Uh, uh, now we can add some simple one. Uh, after design, you can just one click to to launch them into into the cloud. Uh, just run. Uh, I I just told you if you if you have some some misconfiguration, they will, uh, the the ID will tell you something is wrong. Here we have we have a load balancer connect to a to a server that is uh, that is do not have the connectivity, so it will stop stop us and pre prevent we we do wrong things. Uh, if we if we delete it, it can be run in the in the cloud, and we can we can select a, we select a key pair and uh, to run the stack. Then after run the stack, it will be uh, launched into the uh, into the cloud. Also, we can have some some more complex design, and such as this one. We can. Uh, in, in this design, we can set uh, there is a load balancer and uh, two web servers and uh, DB servers. You know, if if you set, you set up a, a little bit complex complex application, uh, there may may have the requirement that you have uh, you have to write some uh, some configuration file that need to uh, reference the other server's IP address or something that can only be determined in the runtime. Um, uh, some traditional configura configuration management tools uh, use the method to collect the information from running servers and then dispatch it to the to the running services. Uh, now, as we can deploy the the whole stack for you, so we can 
we can we can get the information just after we launch the server and uh, give you the uh, give you the configuration directly, uh, such as in in this configuration. We can just we can just point the IP address of another server uh, and uh, render it into the uh, into the uh, into the prefer uh, into the des desired servers. Uh, and uh, and if there if there is exists some some errors, it will will prompt you. Oh, there is something wrong. Uh, what can I do? Uh, then it can be uh, properly roll back, and uh, you can fix the fix the problem and uh, launch it again. And this is an another another stack. And here's a, you can la launch other stacks. After you run it, it will become an app. Um, when we when we launch a, launch a, an app in the in the cloud, it will report the 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 resource data from from the cloud. If we if we change something from the from the, the cloud side, it will it will reflect in the in, in our app. Here I I, tr I will try to we will try try to access our uh, our backend uh, try to connect our backend OpenStack uh, management console and try to modify some modify the server outside of of our visual ops. The server is located in China, so there is a bit a bit slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we wait, it, we can we can see. Uh, we we also have the AWS support. It can also be uh, can also import import exi exist uh, import exist the VPC and create the VPC just just like our OpenStack version. Um, here is the now we are waiting the waiting the backend OpenStack to make the make the app to to be to live. The current current status is as under under building, and uh, minutes minutes later it will become active. Psst. Do you have Do you have more work when we wait it become lab? Uh, probably we can show you a more complex uh, scenario of the, how to deploy like Spark into the cloud. Uh, okay. Uh, we also have uh, our kind of like a marketplace, like a AWS marketplace, but we prepare the templates for uh, for for VisOps. Uh, it's actually uh, similar to a uh, marketplace, but dedicated for distributed application because uh, what you find in the AWS marketplace is more a single, single image sandbox application. But here you can find the Hadoop, Spark, Cassandra, all these uh, uh, production ready and uh, distributed applications. Let's try with, uh, with Spark. Now, this is a, a preview template we made for the Spark. Actually, you can single click to launch it into, uh, into the cloud. Uh, actually, this one is for AWS still. Um, we didn't port it for OpenStack yet. It's 
speed of slow. Okay. All right. That's the uh, that's the stack, and uh, in each uh, instance, you can see the the detailed uh, configuration uh, declaration. We call it state. It's actually a declaration of the state uh, of the configuration of that instance. You can see the, di the using YAM to install some package, uh, download some uh, archive from somewhere, and try to uh, configure the supervisor D uh, to launch the Spark process. And inside of the the the, uh, the configuration file, you can open it to see it clearly. And then you can click launch to uh, deploy the application into the cloud. And we give you a cost dimension of how much it costs monthly in, in AWS or in OpenStack. Where, yeah. uh, it, sometimes it takes like several minutes, depends on how complex the, the, the stack is to launch the application. But you got a general idea. So it, it will help you if you have a, a, a running application in the cloud. We will do the auto scaling and auto healing of your components. Supposing you have a you have a, a traffic burst come in, then we do the auto scaling and uh, configure the new instance and connect to the other uh, dependent services for you. So uh, back to the stack. Um, back to the uh, like PDF demo. PDF demo. Okay. So back to our uh, slide. Uh, actually, we do uh, that's whole life cycle of what we do for your application. We do like uh, design the stack and launch into application. We also do the import to visualize your uh, existing footprint into a uh, we call app into VisualOps, and then you can actually update the running app uh, if you want to do some changes. And we're keeping ensure your application always running in the desired state, also doing the monitor as well. So it's, it's roughly a uh, really complete uh, life cycle management experience. Uh, to sum up, we. Uh, we actually uh, uh, automate an orchestration service for you. You can uh, think of uh, as a, more as a white box pass uh, compared with something like Heroku or Cloud Foundry because uh, people try to, uh, to migrate off from those, those pass players because they, are, they, they pose too much constraint to your code. Um, but when they migrate to, uh, to us layer, they found it's too much overhead to actually manage the application, the, the infrastructure. So they want something like us to, uh, to kill all this heavy lifting for them. So that's where we kick in. And we actually, uh, I think there was, there was uh, some speaker, last speaker mentioned the Instars code. We are doing the same thing, similar thing here, which give you the repeatable uh, experience of deployment and consistency and version control of your uh, infrastructure. And we also apply desired state. So it means like you order the state, we cook it. Uh, auto scaling, auto healing, and we also do the log and auditing for you. So you can say at the end of the, each month, we'll send you a report of what happens in your, what kind of deployment you made, what kind of change you made into your infrastructure. So help do the auditing. And also you can do the push to play deployment. Say you, you have a new uh, Docker image, you can push, push it to the Docker hub and we will fetch the latest version and reload the containers for you. So that's all. So, uh, any questions? All right, cool, thanks.